Hey traders, David Frost, my strategic forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Tuesday, October 10, 2023. We're looking at a daily chart of the SPY or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? We have a whole host of stuff on the docket and it is centered around, for one thing, the neckline of the head and shoulders formation or pattern. Let's start out with what we've said before. If they get above and close the day above the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern, it would be invalidated. They certainly got above today, and we'll talk about exactly where they went to and how to identify the next place as a very important place. So in a sense today, you had two real important places. Both served a purpose today. Let's take a look right now. Let's go right to the videotape of the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern from an intraday perspective. Here's a five-minute chart. Does anybody think that the market knew, Mrs. Market knew where the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern was? The answer is absolutely. And the other answer is they closed below it. On the daily chart, you can't really tell. Looks like they closed right on top of it. How do I know I've drawn the line in to the exact penny? I actually did it to the exact penny. Right here, you have a low of 431.19. Here's the other end of the neckline or the other pivot point, that low is 433.01. If you look at the coordinates of the line, it's 431.19, 433.01. It is to the penny, and they did, in fact, close below the neckline after testing it. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean an eminent collapse in the market. What it does mean is they ran a test of the neckline of the head and shoulders pattern. They spiked it, but they did not close above. If they close above, it wipes the pattern off the table. And you could, not that you can't anyway, but you could get a further squeeze operation to the upside by closing above the neckline. They didn't do that today. We are where we are. We take the market at face value. Wait till you see what I have tonight. I have a whole host of stuff Really, really interesting information. Keep your pants on. What was the other really important place today and why? Well, above the neckline of the pattern was the breakdown candle high coming in at exactly 435.97. There's a trend line exactly at 435.97. They spiked it but they closed below it. They did not fill the gap above. They came about halfway in between, pulled back, did not close the day above that place. And what's interesting about that is, I was kinda in the live trading room today discussing, and we said this, and in the heat of the moment, it's hard to see it this way, but what we discussed was, it is unlikely that in the spirit of first time, best time, in the spirit of that, it's unlikely they would close above that candle high, above 436 for argument's sake, today at the time when they were above 436 and well above the neckline. We weren't really concerned with the neckline as much as we were concerned with, hey, are they going to keep going, fill the gap, or are they going to pull back? And we have that discussion all the time when this occurs in the live room. Looks like a trend day up all day or a trend day down all day. And again, said it today, say it all the time, the majority, the large majority of the time, you're not, I repeat, not, underline, going to get a trend day in the same direction all day. That's the anomaly. The large majority of the time, the market will put in that at least morning, mid-morning, in this case, early afternoon high or low and either go sideways or pull back. It's unlikely you see a trend day up or down all day long. It does happen, just doesn't happen that much, quote unquote, from the live trading room. You look at a 15 minute chart and when you're above all that stuff, it's very hard to see why would the market come back down today? There doesn't have to be a reason, but look what happened one o'clock in the afternoon, market does what? comes right back down to run a test of the neckline of the breakout area. How many times have we seen that before? 
thousands. Now, that covers the head and shoulders pattern on the SPY. Let's go deeper. Here's a snapshot, the daily chart of the S&P E-mini futures, the ESZ contract 2023. Now, this is a vehicle that also tracks the S&P, but it's not the same as the SPY. It's a futures contract. The charts will look slightly different. By and large, big picture, they look mainly the same. However, they're not the same. There's your head and shoulders pattern on the ES chart, but guess what? It's not a head and shoulders pattern. It's not a valid head and shoulders pattern. If you just run through the textbooks, the way it's done is either a flat or ascending line, not a descending line. This line going from left to lower right is descending. That's invalid. There is no head and shoulders pattern on the futures chart. How about the SPX cash index? Bonafide neckline, valid head and shoulders pattern, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, break the neckline, rally back, run a test yesterday, get above today, close above today, close below in the SPY, close above in the SPX. Which one is valid? We don't know. What I will say is, if the SPX is the actual cash index, that is the index, the SPY is a derivative of that index. It pays a dividend. It may explain why there's a price discrepancy. In fact, it does explain why there's a price discrepancy. SPY, close below. SPX, close above. Are we looking at the derivative of the index or are we looking at the index itself? I would say the index itself should take precedent it is the actual thing. The SPY is a derivative of the thing. Doesn't mean anything directly one way or the other. This is information that most people won't take the time to realize. You know what this smells like? It smells like a fake out operation in the making. Let me map it out. Let's see what happens on Wednesday. We know what we know. SPX closed above, SPY closed below. There are traders that will either A, stay short, B, got short right at the close because they tested it, closed below, thinking it's going to collapse. How about a gap up on Wednesday to shake those people out? Pie in the face time. The SPX closed above. You could get a squeeze operation in the northern direction. All these things are possible. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. I'm laying out possibilities. Whoever said this was easy? What was going on today inside the numbers? Did anybody make any money today inside the numbers? And I'll tell you, we had a little bit of a scalp opportunity right out of the gate this morning, right around the opening bell. And then there was a melt-up operation. Few traders got caught on the short side. Few traders got rewarded on the short side later in the day. Few traders bought the long side for the ride up. We've got something for everybody. Show up at zero dark 30 and we know that the markets are in the midst of the inevitable squeeze operation. Overnight crew was eating some time off the clock. You can pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. First order of business for the bulls today was to stay above 431.70. They never came close to that. They did stay above. That kept the door open for some unfinished business at 433.25. Now let's fast forward a little bit and see what happened. We get to nine o'clock. What's the early scoop? What are we going to do? What's the setup? Well, we've got some unfinished business above yesterday's high at 432.88. We've got 433.25 representing overhead resistance. The thieves in the morning already did it in the pre market. But it's still the beginning of overhead resistance. We create a zone. Let's take a look at 433 and a quarter. Right of the vertical is today's activity. You could see 433 and a quarter. They hit it up to the nose. The high was 433.26. They pulled back a little bit. They gave us the scalp. The low here was 432.53. That's our five to seven point scalp. That's our version of the scalp. So 
anything more is a trailing position. They never even came back to fill the gap or came down farther to fill the gap. But what we do in the live room and what we teach inside the numbers live room is you don't let the rest of the trade go bad on you. If the trailer ends up going back up, you let it go and you wait for a higher price and you wait for the market to set up the next trade. We take the base hit, we put it in our pocket. So we had a lot of base hits in our pocket this morning, right out of the gate, little five to seven point scalp. We take it, we move on. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart to double check the work. There's your scalp with potential by 936 in your pocket. Then we create a next zone of resistance. They blew through this number, 434.65 was the next place. That was the neckline over here in the morning session. They only stopped there for a little while and they kept going higher to where the next thing would be. The door would open for 436. Moving right along, you can see here closing candles above begins to open the door for another leg higher toward 436, give or take. So we did have some traders riding it up there. We also had some traders trying to short 434.65, made sense at the time, short the neckline, an important number, they coincide, made sense to me, didn't work, they went through it, they went to the 436. Pause the video, read the notes, go back to the chart and double check the work. After they rose this morning, getting back below 436, they go to 435.30, and then 434.65. And that's exactly what you see here. The low in this candle was what? 434.66. No accidents or coincidences. Not the neckline, but the number. Why do we need to know that? Because traders that were short riding it down have to know where to exit. Have to know where support is. What about stocks on the move? Don't forget earnings will get kicked off in a few days. They will come fast and furious. This is just a trickle right now. We had Juniper was the only one that came into its number. It opened below. It says jump target, but it's worth taking a look at the chart anyway. The other ones did not. They're off the board. There are no trades. There's Juniper getting its haircut at the opening bell. 25.50, they ended up opening below the number and immediately went on a rocket ride right back up. Some traders might have picked it up, but all intents and purposes, the manner in which precluded at least me from the trade and many other traders by opening below, and therefore, technically, it's off the board as a no trade. But you could see here, either way, the numbers work. What about Camp IWM? That's a number we had in the live room today, 176.75. They spiked it, they missed the 20 period moving average and pulled back. For now, this is nothing more than a bounce and a downtrend. It's called a relief rally. We take the market at face value. That's what it is at present. Getting above this pivot high here that comes in at 179.16, well, that opens the door to get the gap. And if they get the gap, they're going to start getting closer to the neckline of their head and shoulders pattern. And therefore, that'll begin to suck price in. We don't know any of that will happen. It only begins getting above this pivot high here. And they're not there now. We're just projecting what ifs. We're the umpire calling balls and strikes. If they pull back away from here, 174, you might remember that number from a couple of weeks ago, 174 will be bona fide support, at least from an intraday perspective. I'm going to lower that slightly. It's the general area. It's really closer to 173. Call it a zone between 173 and 174. What about the folks down at the transportation department? Buttigieg's crew. It's a bounce in a downtrend. However, if they are able to weasel their way above that 100 period moving average, call it above 15,300 and close above there, you'll be on a daily chart at least above all the moving averages and the trend will once again become your friend. Slightly higher would put them above the 20 period moving average on the monthly chart. Once again, pull back in a continued uptrend is what it would become. We talked about this type of weekly chart pullback situation yesterday. So far, they're trying to rally this week. The close will be uber important. There's a lot of alphabet soup data on the board this week. We got PPI, we got CPI. 
Those can certainly be excuses slash market moving data points. Don't forget, we've got tinfoil hat event over the weekend. We've got the annual solar eclipse. Markets can trade up into or down into these events. If they do, it's worth taking a look at. You can get a reversal after, around, on top of, a day before, a day after these events. About the Q people, weekly chart hovering on the 20-week moving average will depend on where the close is. Back to the daily chart, guess what? Above all the moving averages, second day in a row, the trend is your friend until what? Until it's not. What did they do here today? Something familiar? Did they run a test of a breakdown candle high? The high is 371.31. Today's high, 371.28. Three cents short, no accidents or coincidences. These are big time places. Sometimes they spike them through. Other times they come up short. Say it all the time. However, check this one out. First time, best time, unlikely to close a day from a daily chart breakdown candle high. First day up there, unlikely to close above. Unlikely to whistle past the graveyard. That's the concept. You think back to the spiders, they were up there above it for whatever it was today, an hour, a couple hours, hour and a half, whatever the time period was, it's a daily chart. It's a daily chart breakdown candle. So guess what? Anything they do intraday doesn't matter. It's where they close them that's important. They can spike it intraday, but they closed it below. That's important. XLF just participating on the upside today. A little bit of relative strength against the SPY. S&P was up about half a percent. The Qs were up about half a percent. Transports were leading the way, relative strength. IWM leading the way, relative strength. My two favorite market leading indicators. XLF was kind of a tweener. Relative strength against the SPY. Not as much as the transports and IWM. However, positive day for the financials nonetheless. Where are they headed? They're headed to A, this breakdown candle high, B, the 20 period moving average, if and only if they continue the northern direction. We take the market at face value. This is a bounce in a downtrend operation. Nothing more, nothing less until it is. They get above all those moving averages, above 34, and I'll change my tune on that. What about Smash Mouth? Want to see something familiar? Breakdown candle high. The number is 150.54. Today's high was what? 150.98 and they closed below. Doesn't mean they won't gap above tomorrow, but first time, best time, unlikely to blow right on through. Unlikely to whistle past the graveyard first time up. Above all the moving averages, the trend is what? Right. She's your friend. Not sure where the 50 period moving averages disappeared off my chart, just put it back on. Nonetheless, back to the SMH. Above all the moving averages, the trend is your friend. Here, the convergence, that's why I realized it wasn't there. I knew there was a convergence of the moving averages. The 100 and the 50 getting above is above all the moving averages. The trend is your friend. Is this a fake out? Is this resistance back down tomorrow? One day at a time time will tell one candle at a time we don't know what we do know is what we know today they ran a test of a breakdown candle high here's a gap the gap is 151.39 remember today's high was 150.98 so they did not fill the gap so it's now unfinished business on an attempt to fill the gap they left it short are they just going to leave it alone and collapse back down or are they going to go get the gap and or more Time will tell. If I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you without you, these videos are not possible. That is true and accurate information. We're pulling the ripcord here today. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.